Welcome back. Um, we are going to be doing probably the most asked for subject today, which is flashbacks and those obsessive thoughts. Um, I, it's probably cruel we've made you wait until session seven to talk about this um, because I know that I, I would be, I'm very confident in saying that I think that anyone that's gone through discovering an affair deals with this and it's a nightmare. And, um, and I think most of us don't realize that it's going to happen because hopefully this is the first time that you've dealt with this. Um, and so we're gonna talk about that today. And I know for me, I think this was the hardest part of my recovery. I could say easily that this was the hardest part of my recovery um, for a lot of reasons. But one is that I really like to be in control of myself. I want to be in control. And I think, you know, I grew up with like a lot of, um, uh, I don't know what the word would be, a lot of chaos and a lot of unsafe stuff going on. And so when it was just me on my terms, I wanted to be in control and I wanted to be consistent. That's a good word. I like consistent. And so when these flashbacks started happening, I wasn't in control of my thoughts. I wasn't in control of my, of my reactions, my feelings. Um, I hated that. And with flashbacks, for me, I had a lot of flashbacks, a long list. And a positive thing for you to think about is that when I was preparing to do these videos with Milo and Julia, I had to go back and look in my journal because I couldn't remember all of them, which is amazing because they were freaking awful, nonstop, relentless. And I could have listed them out any time before. And so now, you know, I could only remember a couple uh, and had to remind myself of the rest. And one of my, um, triggers that would really cause a lot of flashbacks was the color green and green is everywhere green is outside green is inside green is all over the place and green took me out every day there were many others too so this is so frustrating for all of us for a lot of reasons but one is that you know we didn't know what was going to happen and so we feel crazy. And even if we know it's going to happen, it makes you feel crazy. Like I could be minding my own business, having a really good day. And I'm like, yeah, like things are getting better. And then there's my trigger. And it feels like it's happening for the first time again. And it's, and I swear that like the masterminds of torture wired our brain to do this just to mess with us. Like it's like perfect torture. Let's make them relive it over and over again. And then they're just going to die a slow and painful death. And that's how I felt. And I felt completely crazy. I already have all this stuff going on. I already have all this trauma and grief and heartbreak. And now I feel freaking crazy. And then what it did is for me, it led me into like obsessively, um, thinking about this stuff that was torturing me. And then also obsessively, while I was still trying to work it out with my partner, obsessively asking the same questions over and over again. And, you know, since I hadn't, you know, he hadn't been truthful because you can't be truthful if you're going to hide something like this, of course. Um, I would ask the questions over and over again. And I think I just wanted to hear it because I was processing it. But I also was trying to see like, you know, is this really true? Will he mess up and like share something else? Like, and I was like my quest for truth, because for me, I wanted to know what I was supposed to be forgiving. Like I need to know everything. And so these obsessions and these flashbacks, they're crippling, they're frustrating, they are a nightmare. And so I'm going to shoot over to Julia and ask her, um, why are these happening? What is going on? Like, why can't we get a break from this? Like we could will ourselves all day long. And I'm telling you, even when I was asleep, I would have nightmares. Like I could not get away from this. And the nightmares might not be specific, but it would be like some crazy trauma that would bring it all up for me. And so there was just no escaping. Um, and gosh, if I could have taken that away, I would have paid and done anything to make that stop. Yeah. 
And I think, you know, Melissa, just hearing your story about it, I think is going to be really healing for a lot of people. A lot of you guys watching this probably could totally relate to exactly what Melissa was talking about and feeling alone and feeling crazy and feeling like what's wrong, wrong with me and why is my brain doing this to me and am I broken? And, you know, I already feel broken in all these other areas, but now my brain is going crazy in these ways and, 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 and kind of torturing me with this stuff. Like what is wrong with me? And so the first thing is acknowledging that as much as it feels like there's something wrong with you, that, that, that this is normal. This is what our brain does when it's trying to make sense of something that doesn't make sense. It's trying to find its footing. It's trying to figure out like what is happening here? Why is this happening? Why did this happen? And because our, you know, our brain is always trying to get into a state of balance. And so sometimes when there's trauma, it severs that balance. It severs that safety. It severs that predictability in our brain that, that things are going to be predictable, that we know what's happening and that we know what to expect. All of a sudden this betrayal happens and we no longer know what to expect. We no longer know what's happening. We no longer know what's right and what's wrong, what's true and what's not. And so knowing that this is what's happening, that this is normal, and I don't know how much that helps to make the flashbacks go away, but maybe to helping us not judge ourselves and not feel so crap, like even more crappy about ourselves by telling ourselves there's something weird or broken or flawed or crazy about us for having this stuff to understand that our brain is just trying to either protect us by, you know, replaying situations in our head so that we don't, the same thing doesn't happen again right? It's trying to prevent something horrible from happening again by replaying. And it's almost like, I don't want to forget. Like your brain is, you, you want to forget, but your brain doesn't want to forget because your brain is like, okay, like I just want to keep remembering this stuff so that I can stay on guard and to prevent this from happening again. Or I think sometimes for some of you, Sometimes replaying things and we, we obsessively think about stuff and we, we go around in our heads and it's almost like there's this feeling that if I can know what I did to cause this or if I can know what to do differently to prevent it, I can almost like undo the whole thing. Like our brain just kind of goes into this weird, and if we think about it logically, it makes no sense. But in those moments, our brain will go to that place because it's trying everything to make us feel safe again, to make us feel secure again, to help us to just be able to move forward. And so to acknowledge whatever the reason is that your brain is just, it's, things have been turned on its head. It's not functioning in its safe, trustworthy you know, predictable space anymore. And it's like, I've just sort of like thrown all the cards up in the air and they're all just sort of suspended in the air and nothing is really kind of, it's all just chaos. And so just acknowledging that this is what's happening right now. And again, we've talked about this before that being, trying to be compassionate towards ourselves and to say there's no right way to grieve. There's no right way. There's no proper, proper way to experience trauma. What is happening is what's happening. What is going on is what's going on. And to know that you're not alone in this, you're not weird or broken or crazy for experiencing this. I have to unmute myself. Yes, that's, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to know, like, it's good to know that it's going to happen. It's good to know that you're not weird or the exception or that you're broken in a way. Um, and it's still frustrating, you know, like when you're in it, you're like, just make it stop. How do I make this stop it? Like, and so I want to talk, um, Mello, if you can talk to us a little bit about like, you know, when these come over us and they happen a lot, what are some things that we can do? And, and everybody, this, this can't be like one solution for everybody because we're all real different and we all have a lot of different things going on in our lives. So what I'd like to see is maybe some different things we can do when we're in the thick of it. Um, 
and how we can start seeing this change. Like they're maybe not going to stop, right? But maybe they can start becoming fewer or, you know, not going to happen as often or that's the same thing. Um, so Melo, if you will jump into that and um, kind of talk us through some ideas you have. So a lot of times these obsessive thoughts and the flashbacks slash triggers happen because we haven't truly processed the pain or a lot of times I get questions how do you grieve and get over it? Or how do you go through a trauma like this, a betrayal like this? And my spouse has cheated on me and I, I don't know how to proceed. How, how am I going to get over this? I don't believe that anyone gets over a loss or a betrayal of this magnitude. I believe that you are innately changed from this moment forward that it's happened, even in the space that you're in because if you're watching this, this means that you're aware enough, you're self-aware enough to know that you need to do something differently. You need to change the way that you're processing your experience of after the affair, right? So what I wanna encourage you is to first and foremost, honor yourself for being self-aware enough to know that you need help you need support, you need tools and resources. And these tools and resources that you're going to take with you, I wish if I had the magic ticket, we would all probably be in Bermuda or Tahiti or wherever you wanna go tropical, not too tropical, just a little bit tropical, and we would all be vacationing together and relaxing. But unfortunately, there is no quick fix. Um, Often I'm asked, well, how do I get over the loss or the grief? And there is no quick fix to that. But what I have found are some very functional resources that I like to call exercises that you can utilize to kind of take you through the moment of the trigger or as a lot of people in the divorce community or the the the, the space of, of uh, marriage call flashbacks. When we have flashbacks um, of something that has caused us impossible pain. So impossible, I wanna talk to you about that word for a second, impossible. This is impossible and this is probably the worst pain that you have ever felt. So please don't think that I sit here on the other side of, of, of your screen and expect you to like be willing to go through these exercises and for me to think that this isn't a process and it's to continually go through and to have some tools and resources to assist you each time you face a flashback or a trigger. So I just wanna put that out there. This may not stop it immediately, but at least it will guide you through the impossible, okay? So the first exercise I wanna mention is definitely a grounding exercise that I utilize myself personally, as I've mentioned to you throughout last week and the week before I talked to you personally about my own experience after the affair. And what I do is I like to do a quick um, body scan and I like to connect my body to mind. And I too, like Melissa mentioned, I used to feel crazy, crazy like a June bug as my mom would say. I used to think that I was crazy for feeling what I was feeling. Everybody kept on living. I'd turn on the radio, it would be some melodramatic song about love and loss and you broke my heart or you shook me up or you shook me all night or whatever it was. And that would trigger me. It would be a trigger. And I'd be driving along and I would have to pull over and I would scream. And I'm not talking like, ah, I'm talking the loudest, most visceral scream that I could come up with. And I would scream out my pain and the impossible. And the great part is, is I still sometimes pull over in the car and I scream, but it's a lot less 
And every single time I've made it through the impossible. So I hope that that will encourage you. But what I found really worked for me was, is this grounding exercise was to do a body scan. So I'd start from the top of my forehead, I'd move down to my ears, all the way through my body. And basically I would touch base with what I was feeling. And that would focus me in the moment versus focusing on what the trigger was. And then I would sometimes ask myself, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this? And I'm going to give this to you in written format, but I would say, I feel crazy because I remembered the hotel that we used to stay in where my ex-husband met his mistress. I feel pain. Even as I say it right now, I feel pain even saying that. And I feel pain because it reminds me. I feel helpless and out of control because it reminds me. And once I would address those feelings, and like Julia mentioned, I think last week, it's about self-compassion, allowing ourselves to feel, allowing ourselves to be in touch with what we're feeling. That self-awareness, while it's not a quick fix, it is a permanent remedy for you to understand why you feel what you feel. We cannot undo the pain of what's causing that flashback or that trigger, but what we can do is acknowledge the pain, recognize the pain, and be able to move forward, to be able to go forward. I'm not saying that it's once you do this exercise, you're never gonna have another trigger or flashback because that's what I think the question is, how do I stop this? But I want to encourage you each time you have a flashback or a trigger, it's definitely helping you to propel forward. Every time you face your pain, it's helping you to move forward. It's helping you to be present in this moment, not back there, not in front over there, but to be present and to understand that this is helping you. It's helping you to move through it, not over it, through it. First things first. Another exercise that I think is very, very powerful is it's called two minute increments. And so what the two minute increments are is to be in your surrounding, and again, it goes back to being mindful. And again, to acknowledge the trigger, to acknowledge the flashback, right? But then to sit in a place of being able to, and I'm gonna provide you with a list, and all you have to do is circle it. And for two minutes, you set a timer on your smartphone or however you do your timer. I do everything with Surrey, the smartphone. Surrey set a two minute timer. I start and I start circling what I'm grateful for. I provide you with over 60 things that you can be grateful for in that very second. And you're more than welcome to add on. Now you may be thinking in your mind, you may already be cussing me out and I'm good with that. That's okay. Sister, brother, I'm with you. If I was on the other side of the screen, I'd probably be cussing me out too. But I want you to stay in a place of gratitude. When you're in a place of gratitude, you can't be in a place of hysteria. I want you to sink that in. I want you to take that in. When you're in a place of gratitude, truly grateful for what is there, here, in this very moment, you're unable to stay in that other place. And that is the goal through these exercises. So when you try to do each one of these exercises, the reason why I'm giving you variations is because not everything works for every person but I want you to try to either become connected to your body where mind and body are working together. I want you to notice your surroundings or I want you to go into yourself of 
gratitude, find the gratitude, or I want you to ask yourself why you're feeling what you're feeling. I want you to have self-compassion, as Julie has mentioned, self-awareness to understand why you're feeling what you're feeling or why does this color bring this up for me or why does that sound bring that up for me? For me personally, just to share with you, flower bomb. Everybody loves flower bomb. One day I went into my vehicle and I have a very, I can I smell smells and I smelled flower bomb, the perfume. And I was like, Ooh, maybe my guy got me a present. So I look around and sure enough, there was a flower bomb, beautiful gift set from Nordstrom's beautiful. And I thought, Oh, he's going to give it to me. Well, I never got that flower bomb. I don't know who got it, but it wasn't me. And so every time I smell flower bomb, it would bring up that trigger and all those thoughts would come fleeting in and it would take me. And I know again, I feel crazy for saying that's my memory of flower bomb. But what I learned to recognize was, is those are my feelings. That is my experience. It is mine. It's not anyone else's. It's not about what anyone else thinks. It's mine. So about a year ago, walk into Nordstrom, I would think it was their anniversary sale. Walk in. And so the girl comes over and I said, I'm looking for a new perfume. And she shows me Tori Birch. Well, before I knew it, she's spraying and it was flower bomb. She sprays flower bomb like all around. It's like whifting me. It's like, oh, it's taking me over. And I start to shake. And I think the sales lady, I, I don't want to assume what she thought, but she was very kind to me. And so she said, let's breathe. And as I was having a panic attack, she started talking to me and she started getting me out of having that experience. And I ended up telling her, and she hugged me and she said, you know, I, my, my person had an affair too. And she's telling me her experience. And we're in this moment, in this Nordstrom, a busy Nordstrom, like in Southern California. And we're sitting there and we're having this experience together. And what that made me realize is, is that sometimes we just need to come out of the feeling that we're in to understand why we're having it. And we just need compassion. So if there's not that beautiful perfume lady that was there for me, I needed to have self-compassion for myself. I needed to recognize my experience. And I did. And listen, many times I have had those experiences and I didn't have a kind, compassionate perfume lady. I had people rolling their eyes at me, looking at me, whispering, and I could hear. But at the end of the day, I had to own my feelings. I had to own the flashbacks and the triggers. And what it's helped me is to come through the impossible. So my hope for you is, is that one of these exercises will guide you. Again, you may have already cussed me out. You may have already shut down, but maybe you're going to come back to this at some point and go, wow, that lady in the green dress, she knew what she was talking about because one of these exercises, if not all of these exercises will help you to work through your triggers and flashbacks. So I hope that will help you. Yeah, that's, um, this is going to be really important work. The, um, so just so you know, like I know that Melo just went through a lot of stuff and, and fully explained some and didn't fully explain others. So we're going to have um, in this email, we'll have all that stuff written out for you to go through on your own time and to really process that as well as um, those gratitude worksheets so that you have some time with that. And just to encourage you, like, I have no idea when my triggers stopped. I tried really hard to remember that. And I don't know. It's just like they got less and less until they were gone. Um, which is really cool, but like, it's like, there's nothing that just made it go away ever. And, um, and it just was gone. And, and I think it was really cool for me. Like, that's why we want to keep, we're going to keep pushing journaling down your throat so that I could see that like this huge list of stuff I just happened to write out. I didn't remember. I remembered three, I think I remember three things and that's it. And so 
as you're in the thick of it and this happens to you and it overcomes you and like, you know, I remember always being like cooking and then something would happen and like, ah, oh, and like just be on the kitchen floor, like losing my mind. Um, you know, trying to be mindful and going through these exercises and just, I mean, you might have to print out some of these like gratitude worksheets and put it in your wallet and just like bust it out real quick. Like if that's what you have to do, then you just do it. Um, but for me, if somebody would have told me, here's what's going to happen and here's what's t what you should expect, that would have been a big game changer for me. Um, and so expecting that this is going to happen still sucks, but it's better than being like, uh, am I broken forever? You know? So, um, you know, it's, this week is hard week. I mean, all the weeks, I keep saying that, all the weeks are pretty hard, but man, this is really hard because I think we all really struggle with this and all desperately do not want to struggle with it. Um, and so just wrapping up, um, you know, what Julia likes to say is just making space for you to actually feel that and not trying to run away from it. Um, just can I add one more thing to that, Melissa? You can get it. Even like, even you saying that with the flashbacks, is so often, and I, I, I hear this so often from my clients and the students that I work with, is they will feel, like you said, it comes out of nowhere. You'll feel like I'm doing great, and then all of a sudden it will hit you out of nowhere and like slay you. You'll be flat on the ground. You're like, where did that come from? I thought I was doing better. I thought I would, things were starting to come together, and now all of a sudden I'm flat on my face again. And so what we do is we blame ourselves and we think, you know, like, see, I'm not, I can't handle this. I can't do this. There is something wrong with me. You know, I am weak because I just, I can't, you know, stop having these flashbacks or stop getting emotionally, you know, just like slayed. And so that's what we do in those moments. If we can take a little bit of a step back and acknowledge the space in between. So what we do is we acknowledge the blips. We acknowledge the, 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 the peaks but we don't acknowledge the space in between when we were doing well, when we were handling life, when we were feeling more stable and more calm and grounded. And so giving ourselves, like speaking of gratitude, allowing ourselves that acknowledgement and that gratitude and that recognition for ourselves for the space in between and noticing that the space in between does become longer and paying attention to that. So having the moment is not what defines us. You know, it's, it's, it's how we treat ourselves when we are having those moments that's going to make the difference. Am I going to blame and shame and criticize myself for struggling? Or I'm going to acknowledge myself? Like, like I say, you know, am I going to acknowledge myself? I'm gonna be, am I going to be compassionate towards myself? Am I going to say to myself, it's understandable that I'm having this flashback or this memory or this panic or this moment because something terrible has happened in my life? because something traumatic has happened in my life? Am I gonna blame myself or am I gonna show compassion for myself? And then am I, am I gonna notice, instead of the noticing the tough moments and obsessing about the tough moments and blaming myself for the tough moments, am I gonna acknowledge the moments in between? So. Yes. Ooh. I'm glad that you got that one in there. Um, so again, this week, um, as you work through this, especially hard work, um, definitely be encouraging each other um, on our Facebook group, sharing what works for you, what doesn't. Maybe you find something that we haven't shared with you that you think is just the bomb.com. So go ahead and share that with us and let's just work through this process. Um, next week is going to be another heavy week, so prepare yourself. And um, we'll see you soon. Bye, guys.